What's up, guys? You can check out our podcast, articles, or our full proxy gallery all at our brand new website, www.itresolvesmtg.com. What's going on, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Crack of Pack series. Today, for probably only like the third or fourth time on this series, we actually get to open a pack of Dissension. Uh, Dissension was a really awesome set, uh, part of the original Ravnica block. Uh, lots of really fantastic cards in this one. Uh, of course, uh, a lot of multicolored stuff, which we'll see as we go through the pack. Uh, this was, I don't remember if this was the middle or the last uh, in that block out of the three. Uh, it was Ravnica City of Guilds. Then we, of course, had Dissension and then Guild Pact. I do not remember the order between Guild Pact and Dissension, but... Uh, really interesting set, a lot of cool mechanics that we'll go through, uh, and of course we'll hopefully be able to figure out what our first pick would be if we were drafting this set. I did not draft during this time, I did collect a little bit, uh, and so we're, we're kind of learning this one together. But uh, our first card here is Cackling Flames. Uh, it is an instant for three and a red, and it deals three damage to target creature or player. Already pretty good, it's a little bit expensive in my opinion, but at instant speed I think that's actually quite good. Uh, and then this features Hellbent, so it deals 5 damage to that creature or player instead if you have no cards in hand. Uh, Dissension uh, featured Hellbent with cards like Infernal Tutor as well, which is one of the ones that really gets to see a little bit of constructed play. Uh, and it kind of rewards you for playing out a lot of your stuff, which is exactly what you want to do anyway. Uh, of course, generally speaking, you're probably going to be holding on to one or two cards throughout the game, depending on, you know, if they're your big bombs or something like that. Uh, and so what's nice, though, is this makes top decks a little bit better. Uh, if you are in top decking mode and you top deck something like this, it means you'll be able to deal a little bit extra damage instead of just that original three. And that's actually really, really good. Uh, not only is this a very strong opening because it's a removal spell and just a very solid flexible burn spell, uh, but it gives you that, that flexibility if you do get to that top deck point that this just all of a sudden becomes a much better card. So I actually really like this. I think this is a very strong opening. We'll see what the rest of the pack holds. Uh, Macabre Waltz uh, is one and a black for a sorcery. Return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand, and then you discard a card. So uh, cards like this, I actually like having as a one of in a lot of decks, uh, especially if you've got a lot of creature value. Uh, if you've got a lot of creature value, it makes a lot of sense to have these because you get double the value out of your creature spells. So uh, if your opponent, for instance, you play out your bomb and they, you know, use whatever removal spell on it, but send it to the graveyard, uh, you're able to pull it back and then all of a sudden they have to have another answer for that. Otherwise, they do just lose the game. It's, it's great to target with must answer kinds of cards. Uh, and so this makes a really, really good just value engine for a deck. Uh, I say engine loosely because obviously it is just a one-shot deal. Uh, the fact that you do do you discard a card off of this, uh, I don't necessarily think is that big of a, a setback. Uh, generally, you're going to play this later in the game uh, when you do have some value creatures to play. Uh, and so a lot of times you can just discard a land or pick two creatures up, pitch one if you know you're going to win the game off of one. Uh, so this is actually a very flexible card. I, I like Cackling Flames definitely a lot better. Uh, but Macabre Waltz, very, very solid pick in a black deck uh, if you find yourself with some very, very good creature value. Uh, Wrecking Ball is an instant for two, a black and a red. Uh, very simply, destroy target creature or land. Uh, and honestly, I think this beats out the Cackling Flames because uh, it is just straight up destroy target creature, uh, which means it's going to be able to deal with a lot more. It does hit lands. Generally speaking, that's not really going to be a priority. However, this is a multicolored set, so you do have to keep in mind they're probably going to be playing some kind of bounce lands or something like that. Uh, and so it'll actually be nice to be able to maybe get that opportunity to shut them off of a color. Uh, if you can do that, that's actually very, very powerful, especially in a format like this. Uh, multicolor speaking on that, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, this is a multicolor card. So you do have to kind of keep that in mind when you're picking something like this early is that you're already putting yourself into two colors. The good thing about that is this is Ravnica. This is the set where you're going to do that. So generally you'll find yourself in two to three colors. There are, I'm sure, multicolor decks that run all five colors, uh, just jank kind of value decks. Uh, however, 
This I don't think is bad early picking uh, just because, again, the set we're in. So I actually really like this. Instant speed, four mana, destroy target creature or land. That is premium, premium removal. <clears throat> uh, Cytospawn Shambler uh, is a zero, zero for six and a green. Uh, you graft six. This is the Simic ability. So this creature comes into play with six 1-1 one, one counters on it. Whenever another creature comes into play, you can move a 1-1 one, one counter from this creature onto it. So uh, Graft was really cool because it did get to move those counters around. You could power up some of your lower power creatures, make them more useful late game uh, and things like that. It was actually a really, really sweet mechanic. Uh, you can also pay a green and target creature with a 1-1 one, one counter on it gains trample until the end of the turn. That is very, very nice uh, because it just means you're hopefully going to be able to deal damage every single turn, even if you're getting blocked. Uh, especially if you're swinging in with something big, which by the time you're playing this, this on its own is quite big. So uh, you should be able to deal a little bit of damage every turn regardless of the board state, uh, depending on, of course, what the opponent has out. So uh, this is just a very decent bomb. Uh, it does not beat Wrecking Ball, in my opinion. That, that removal is just super, super premium in this set. Uh, and so I wouldn't take that, uh, I wouldn't take this, excuse me, over it, but it is a very, very decent, uh, I'll say, bomb for a blue, green, Simic deck, something like that. <clears throat> uh, Guardian of the Guild Pact is a 2-3 three for 3 and a white, and it has protection from mono-colored, so anything that is a single color cannot touch this card, which is worth noting. Uh, it gets a around things like the uh, crack Cackling Flames, excuse me. Uh, it can technically... I, I guess get around the shambler and things like that as well. It's actually a very interesting card. The thing to note about it is there are a lot of multicolor cards in this set, uh, and you're underpowering this card uh, in terms of stats solely because of that protection. So it's not going to win you the game necessarily, but if you find yourself up against a deck that has a lot of monocolored cards, maybe this is a good sideboard option. I think it's an okay main deckable option, but I don't think it's as great as you might think. Uh, again, solely because we're in a multicolor format, we're going to be seeing cards like Wrecking Ball that are just going to be able to deal with this very, very efficiently. So uh, not super exciting in my opinion. I think Wrecking Ball much, much better. Simic Signet uh, is an artifact for two of any color. You can pay one and tap it and add one green and one blue to your mana pool. Uh, what's nice, there's a full cycle of these uh, in this set, which is really, really sweet. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, each with two uh, with different multicolor. There's Rakdos. There's things like that, uh, which is really really nice because not only does this actually technically ramp you, uh, you're paying one mana in to get two mana out, uh, but it also fixes you. It gives you two different colors of mana, not just one. So these signets truly truly phenomenal. Uh, they're very very good in things like cube. We see them all the time there. Uh, however, uh, a little bit undervalue, uh, it, they're, they're higher value in cube is what I'm trying to say. I think they're a little bit less of a, a value pick here. That doesn't mean they are bad. They're still very, very good. In fact, the Simic Signet is probably one of the ones I would really try and go for, uh, early because you're wanting to ramp, you're wanting to get your big stuff out. Uh, and so it's actually a really nice pickup, but, uh, I do think Wrecking Ball is a better pickup in this instance. It's just a much more flexible, powerful card. Uh, the ramp here is worth noting. You do want that, but uh, I think uh, I think Wrecking Ball is just a better pick. So that's what I'm going to go with here. Uh, Simic Initiate is a zero zero for one green with Graft One. So same ability we saw before. It comes into play with only one counter on it, uh, and then whenever another creature comes into play, you can move that counter off of it. When you do with a card like this, obviously it is going to die. It's a zero zero. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but it does give you the ability to kind of power up some of your later game creatures again uh, and trade this in for a little bit more of a powerful creature. So it's really adding value to all of your creature spells throughout the game, uh, is assuming it can stick on the field. Um, this is a perfectly fine one drop. It's not amazing. Uh, you tend not to value one drops too highly. Uh, and I wouldn't consider this a great pick, but it is something if you're in that deck, maybe you pick up mid to late pack. Uh, and I think that would be perfectly fine, but definitely not first picking. Uh, v v Vigian? Vigian? I don't know. Hydra pun? Yeah, that. We'll say that. It's a 0-0 zero, zero for one, a green, and a blue uh, with graft five. Uh, and it can't attack or block, which is interesting. So the reason this is a still an okay card is because you can move those 1-1 one, one counters around. However, uh, and you're getting a lot of them, that should be noted, but... 
I feel like this is a really bad three drop. I hate the fact that this can't attack or block. That is very, very bad. Uh, if it could only block, it would be perfectly fine. I would love a card like this. If it can't attack or block, it seems much, much less useful. That being said, you do still power up things, and this gives you a lot of counters long term uh, to be able to move to your other creatures. So it is actually a very powerful card, I'm sure, in that regard. Uh, however, Wrecking Ball just seems like a much more strong, uh, solid pick, so I'm still going to go with that over this. Uh, however, again, in that Simic deck, I don't think that this is bad by any means. <clears throat> Uh, Nettling Curse is an enchant creature for two and a black, and whenever the creature attacks or blocks, its controller loses three life, uh, and then pay one and a red enchanted creature attacks this turn if able. So this is a really interesting card. I don't love stuff like this, uh, because you're kind of hoping that your opponent does something bad with it, but like, it's kind of their choice what to do. Uh, I prefer not to give the opponents the choice. Uh, I'd honestly just rather play a strong three drop or something like that, like creature that's going to be able to deal with that, the, the creatures on board versus just playing like, you know, an enchant creature that might ping them for a few damage. So I don't love this card. Uh, generally I stay away from cards like this. I don't think they're bad necessarily. There are definitely instances where they're good. Uh, however, not my favorite kind of card. If you time it right, you can really get something. You can kind of use this as a pseudo removal spell. Uh, but it's really, really tricky, and I, I think it's a bit of a bit much for the setup cost uh, that I don't love. Uh, Beacon Hawk is a one-one for one and a white. It has flying, and when it deals combat damage to a player, you can untap target creature. Do love that. Uh, you can pay one white, and it gets plus zero plus one until the end of the turn. Again, that's fine, but not amazing. Uh, boosting toughness is fine uh, because it just means your creatures are probably going to be able to stick around for a while if you need them to. But the power's still only one. Uh, you're not really going to be dealing much damage. You might be able to block some stuff uh, and save yourself some damage, but you're going to have to invest mana every single turn to do that. Uh, and that just tends to be quite bad. So uh, while I don't think this is a terrible card, uh, it's definitely not better than Wrecking Ball by any means, and it's definitely not the pick here. Uh, Overrule is an instant for X, a white, and a blue counter target spell unless its controller pays X, and then you gain X life. This seems like a perfectly fine counterspell for the Azorius deck. Uh, Azorius is very much the control deck, that white-blue kind of shell. Uh, very, very strong. Uh, generally speaking, I shy away from control decks in a limited format. That's not to say they're bad. Uh, what that just means is you're dealing with a lot of creatures on board. Uh, and so while countering them and removing them can work, uh, you really have to stay ahead in tempo almost always uh, just because you can't really let yourself slip for a turn or two uh, while your opponent is just building up their board because if you do, all of a sudden they're swinging in and you have no answers for that. And so it's a little bit tricky, but if you can make it work, it's good. And this is certainly a card to go in that deck. Again, not a first pick, but not bad for sure. Uh, our first uncommon is Brace for Impact. Uh, it's an instant for four and a white. Prevent all damage that will be dealt to target multicolored creature this turn. For each one damage prevented that way, put a 1-1 one, one counter on that creature. Uh, I don't know if this is very good. Um, I tend to shy away from things that prevent damage like this. However, those 1-1 one, one counters kind of make me second guess that. Uh, it's nice to be able to power up a creature like that. That being said, you are kind of investing a card into a creature, and if they have a removal spell, for instance, you're kind of losing that value, which does kind of suck. Uh, but you're still saving it from combat damage, which can be nice. Uh, I don't think that this is a great card by any means, and I don't think it's it's definitely not the pick here, I'll say. Uh, however, I would be considering trying... I, I would consider trying this uh, if I was genuinely drafting. Uh, not first pick again, but if I found myself in a white, like, Boros deck or something like that, I'd consider it. Uh, second uncommon, Vigian Graft Mage. Uh, it's a zero zero for two and a blue. It has graph two, uh, and you can pay one and a blue and untap target creature with a one one counter on it. So this is actually a really good enabler uh, for the Simic deck, solely because you can start untapping all these creatures, swing in with them, untap them, leave them up for blocks. You can do a lot of really really cool stuff with this. Uh, I don't know if it's better than Wrecking Ball. I don't really think so. Uh, while it is very very good, uh, I don't think it's amazing. Uh, and so I think I would still stick with the Wrecking Ball. I feel like it's just a really solid card on its own. This definitely really, really has a lot of synergy, uh, again, with that Simic deck, and that can be a very good backbone. Uh, and maybe I'm wrong on this. Again, I haven't drafted this set for real, so I don't know, but 
Uh, my my inkling is if you're unsure, go for the just really solid card on its own. And that leans me towards Wrecking Ball. And so, again, that may be incorrect. You guys can definitely correct me in the comment section for those that have drafted this set. Uh, but Wrecking Ball seems like just a super solid pick. So I think I'm going to lean for towards that for now. Uh, last uncommon is Leaf Drake Roost. It's three, a green, and a blue for an enchant land. Uh, the enchanted land has uh, pay a green, a blue, and tap it and put a 2-2 two, two green and blue Drake creature token with flying into play. Now that does seem very powerful. Uh, I will say token generators in limited just to be able to throw a little bit of mana uh, and a land into this basically is great. It's repeatable, obviously only once a turn, but still quite good. Uh, I actually really like this. I don't know if this is better than Wrecking Ball, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, throwing out all these creatures can really, really be a good uh, way to go. It just gives you such a strong board presence, so I, I really like that. This also triggers Graft really well. You can start throwing all of these counters onto these, uh, and so maybe that's a good thing too. I'm going to keep them together for now. We'll see what our rare is, which is Void Slime. So instant for a green and two blue counter target spell activated ability or triggered ability uh this is just a really solid counter spell obviously more flexible than a regular counter that being said it is obviously a little bit trickier to cast uh green and two blue is a lot to ask however it is still very very good uh i don't think i would take it here counter spells while good are definitely not the focus of a draft deck generally uh, maybe you have one or two of them or even three or four depending on what your shell looks like but generally speaking not a super high priority pick i do genuinely think it's between the wrecking ball and the leaf drake roost uh, both of which i think are very good picks i'll go ahead and say uh, there were a, a lot of simic cards to take in this pack uh, which is a little bit tricky because just to talk about signaling for a brief moment, I know we're going a bit long, but signaling is really important. Uh, say you take Wrecking Ball, for instance, you're obviously passing a lot of good Simic cards, which means you're putting your opponents probably in that Simic deck. If there's some really high value things, they're obviously going to prioritize those, especially early in a draft when they're not settled into a color pair. Um, if you take, say, Leaf Drake Roost, you're still doing the same thing because there are already a lot of really good Simic cards still in this pack, and so you may be pushing them into that deck, which means long term you're going to be losing value. You're not going to be able to pick up those Simic cards because your opponents are going to be picking them as well. Uh, so signaling is very important. You should always think about that. Again, I think the safe pick is still Wrecking Ball. I do think that that's a very good card. However, it's really hard to pass up on that token generator. I'm going to be honest, I think I would go with the uh, the Leaf Drake Roost here. I just, I love that repeated token generation, triggering graft on all of your other creatures to push those counters to that Drake uh, are really, really good. So I think I'm going to lean there. Very, very tough pick, I'll go ahead and say. So feel free in the comment section, as always, to let me know what your thoughts are. Very, very happy to have that conversation. But if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crackerback episode.